Hello. This is a quick demonstration of binomial and proving that the binomial converts into the normal as we send n to infinity. Well, um, if we just start off by looking at basic binomial, basic binomial here, probability is p is 0 0.5 for our symmetry with our normal, and let's start with n equals 10. So that would be our um, description. So let's have a look at um, the shape. So here we've got our binomial, our binomial uh, values, and the red line here is the normal, and that's n equals 10. So if we go to n equals 20, it's getting closer. If we go to n equals 30, it's getting even closer. And if we go to n is 100, we've almost got the same distribution, haven't we? So intuitively, it is one and the same. So let's now go back and um, calculate um, why that is. OK, well, what's our basic binomial formula? Here it is. Here's our probability. n choose r, p to the r, n minus r, um, q to the n minus r. To make it symmetric, we'll make p equals q equals a half. And if we do that, that simplifies our probability down to n choose r um, times 0.5 to the power n. So there's our shape, isn't there, our basic shape. But we've still got a series of discrete um, probabilities, yeah? And each one has a little range. That's one in terms of our units, but we need to standardise it because um, what we saw earlier was that as our n gets greater, so our mean goes flying off to infinity and so does our standard deviation. So we need to... Uh, standardize that and we do it by using this form here um, that our z value is going to be our r value minus our mean divided by our standard deviation that's going to give us our probability density if we use that we need to find our probability density so we're taking the binomial probability from above and our little delta here uh, which is our little distance in terms of standard deviations we now need for our prob um, PDF. So that's going to be one whole unit going from one to um, uh, discrete to the next. And then we're going to divide it by our standard deviation because we're interested in how many standard deviations is. That's NPQ, square root of. Um, so what does that do to our formula? Well, when we do that division, our formula turns into that form. So we've got P to the Z here. Our PDF is n choose r times one half n uh, to the power n plus one and n to the half. Well, this right hand side is just a constant, isn't it? It doesn't vary with n or z. It's the n choose r that's varying, and that's the bit that's giving us our shape of our uh, normal and our binomial. So, what can we do to investigate what's this? What's happening to this n choose r as we vary z? Well, we know where we want to get to. We need, um, in a but normal, we know that we have an expression that's e to the minus e to the minus z squared over two. So, if we investigate the log of n choose r, so then we'll be looking at the log of something e to the minus z squared over two, which is going to should give us a term e to the minus z squared over two as being our term um, driving the um, shape and we're going to use a Maclaurin to do that. So what do we know about log of n choose r? Well n choose r is n factorial over n minus r factorial r factorial. So we can split, if we do it in log form, we split it into three logs. Log of n factorial minus log of n minus r factorial minus log of r factorial. Now hopefully Sterling created an approximation for uh, factorials, um, which tells us that the log of x factorial for large values of x is approximately equal to x log x minus x. So if we substitute that into our, ex our expression above, we get this section here is our log n factorial. That's our log minus our log n minus r factorial minus our log r factorial. After a bit of tidying up, it comes to this line here. First bit's constant here. It's got no r's in it. This has got an r here and here and here and here. So what we're interested in is how this is going to vary as we vary z. 
Well, um, R and Z are connected, we saw earlier through that equation. And if we make R the subject, so we can use it in the equation above, then R is going to be the mean plus Z times the standard deviation. Well, we know we're looking at a binomial here, so we know the mean is NP, and we know standard deviation is square root of NPQ. We've decided to put P equals to a half, so that simplifies the mean to N over a half and the standard deviation to N over a half, uh, N to, um, to the power a half over a half. And that gives us this relationship here between R and N. So R equals N over 2 and 1 plus Z over root N. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because when Z equals 0 and we're at the middle of our normal, then R will equal N over 2, you know, halfway along it. What are we going to do now? Well, we're going to use McLaurin. Well, McLaurin to... Um, the chlorine process to find to make an approximation for the log of n choose r. Well, McLaurin tells us that the function of z, so f of z, is approximately in the area of z equals naught. It's going to be um, f of naught, f dash of naught times z, and f double dash of naught times z squared over 2. Here, well, we know what f z is from the work we did above, and we know from the chain rule that f of z, df dz is going to be dr dz um, times df dr. Well, we can differentiate the equation above, um, df dr, that equation just above there. Let's keep it on the screen there, this one here. There we are. So if we differentiate this equation here, first, first um, using the product rule, we're going to get those two for that term, and on the product rule, we're going to get those two for that term. Excuse me, let's just get rid of that. That's in the way. You don't want that there, do you? You want a bit if you're looking at this in slow time. So that's our and that simplifies down to this equation. Okay. Um, we also need to find dr by dz. Well, we know that that is our equation for r in terms of z, and we differentiate that and we get dr dz is n a half over half into power half. So there we have our expression by for df by dz. Um, there we are. So what's the thing we have to do? We have to find f dash of zero. So that's the differential when z equals zero. When z equals zero, we're in the middle of our distribution. So r equals n over two. If we substitute that into this equation, we find that we've got log of n over two minus log over n over two. So f dash is zero, that's probably what we expect, so we haven't got a z term in our expression. We've got an f naught term, but we haven't got an f dash naught. Next thing we have to do then is we have to do, um, find our second differential. So we can differentiate what we, had, what we um, calculated earlier, can't we? And again with the chain rule, um, and moving the n, n to the half, over two out the front, the chain rule here is going to be another end. In a minute, we're going to substitute that, and we just have to differentiate this um, bracket here, don't we? dr, which gives us this here. Having brought these dr by dz back, which we've had before, we've now got two lots of n to the half to the power half over two, and we've got this uh, bracket there. So all of that comes together into this um, expression, this relationship that f double dot z equals n minus n over minus n over four, and then we've got a one over n minus r plus one over r. Well, when we we want to find what this that is when when z equals zero again r equals n over two, we substitute that in, and we find that f double dash of zero is minus one. So, we now know then that our, using our Maclaurin, that our log of n choose r is approximately our f naught zero, which is some form of constant, minus, we didn't have a z term, we've only got this term here, haven't we, the minus, minus a half z squared, that's the 2 from our Maclaurin because it's divided by 2. And that proves to us very quickly that, therefore, p to the z is proportionate to e to the minus z squared. And that's what we're looking for, isn't it, in a um, normal. So we've done the first half of the job. What we don't know is what the constant is. 
Okay. Let's work out what the constant is, shall we? All right. So we know that we've got an expression of this form. What we now need to do is to find out what this constant is. Here. And we know that the area under the curve must equal zero, isn't it? Because the total probability under this, um, under the normal curve here, must equal one. Yeah, because all probabilities must add up to one. But our problem is we can't integrate this immediately, can we? We can't integrate that function, our probability distribution, uh, PDF from minus infinity to plus infinity because that's the full range isn't it because we can't integrate this term here can we so we've got to do a bit of a trick what we're going to do is we're going to use this expression twice and we're going to doesn't matter the fact that we've got it in z here we could have the same integral in x and we can have the same integral in y and if we write it in x and y then they're all going to have the same value, aren't they? That if we integrate this, integrate that expression, we've got the area under the curve. And that's in z, so that should be in z squared. And if we write it in x squared here or in y squared here, they're all going to have the same value, aren't they? They're going to have the same value, which is going to be a, every one of them, yeah? So if we created a probability surface here in x and y, so we're going to have our axes x and y, and our vertical is going to be the probability of x, y, and we're going to make that probability just, we're just going to multiply probability of x times probability of y, um, which we've got the expression sure up there, haven't we? So the volume under that surface is going to be, um, this joint PDF is going to be px, py, and we're going to integrate it for the whole range of x and the whole range of y. Now, as these two, the px and the py, are entirely independent of each other, so the x is only dependent on x and the y is only independent, dependent on y, we can then split that, um, that integral above and we can take all the x's together and all the y's together. So we now know that we've got a times a, so we've got a squared here, which we know is 1 because each of those areas was 1. Now, this is something we can integrate because what we can do here is putting in our um, expression again for the normal. It's ke to the minus x squared and ke to the minus y squared. Um, so we can put the k's together. That's just a constant. And now we've got this expression e to the x, x squared plus y squared over 2 dx dy. And we can convert this into polars. Yippee! And this is going to give us our... We've been looking for where our pi comes from, haven't we? I know it's written. So if we took a little area here, footprint area, in um, x dx dy, instead we're going to do the whole thing in r and theta. And so our little footprint area here has got area r dr d theta. Um, probably better that's going that length there is r d theta isn't it and that one is dr so when we multiply those together we get this form yeah so and of course r x squared plus y squared is going to be r squared so here are two um, components that we need in order to do the integral because we can convert that integral that we replace our x squared plus y squared with r squared we replace our dx dy with r dr d theta. We now need to change our limits on our integral. And for our theta, for our angle, well, we're going a full turn, aren't we? So we're going from 0 to 2 pi. And for our r value, we're going from 0 to infinity now to cover the whole thing. But the great thing now is all these components are either functions. This k is just a constant come out the front. Um, delta theta, well, there's no other expression in here that relates to theta, so we can move that aside with, in, with its integral. And then over here, we've got our r, e, all the rest of the terms are functions of dr, aren't they? So that's our 0 to uh, infinity integral there. And we can therefore integrate, we've got our k squared at the front, we integrate our 
uh, delta theta, we get theta, and that's from 0 to 2 pi, and we integrate our e to the expression in here in R, and we get this one here, because we've now got an R at the front, uh, allows us to integrate it, and that's going from 0 to infinity. So we've got a k squared, we've got 2 pi once we've integrated that, and this becomes 0 minus minus 1. So all that lot gives us the integral is k squared 2 pi. And we know that's the volume, isn't it? And we know that the volume under this uh, curve is a squared, and we know a equals 1. So we therefore know that k squared 2 pi equals 1. So we now know that k equals the square root of 1 over 2 pi. And we have therefore proved the fundamental normal distribution. Uh, P to the z is 1, half, is 1 over um, square root 2 pi e to the minus z squared. So I hope that's of use to you. A bit long, but it takes you from one end to the other all in one place. Thank you very much.